Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited you guys because today I start a new series here on my channel where I will review fragrances from a new brand for me and most likely a new brand to you as well that I have been testing in the last one month and a half by the time I'm filming the video. The brand is called Parfumane and I want to start with the fragrance that I have been using the most lately from them, which is called Sacred Palace. I have it here, uh, I have it right here with me. I want to let you know how this fragrance smells like, uh, if it reminds me of any other fragrances, uh, how it performs, how it develops, some layering ideas at the end of the video. But before I start, I want to give you a bit more information about the brand so you can kind of have an idea as to how this brand is like. Now, uh, before I start, I want to let you know that all the fragrances that I will talk about from this brand were kindly sent to me by the brand so thank you so much uh, to the team from Parfumane for sending me all these fragrances so yes let's just begin now um if you haven't heard of the brand, they were founded in 2020 in Turkey. It's a Turkish brand and the founder is also the nose behind all of these fragrances now his name is Bekir Kantarci, but look, my Turkish pronunciation is not the best. I don't speak Turkish, nor do I understand it, so I'd ma I might butcher some of these names. So if I butcher them, uh, please excuse me in advance, but yes. The How did I find out about them? They reached out to me, they sent me an, e an email, and they asked me if I would like to test some of their fragrances and to review them here on my channel. And in that email, they also added a catalog with uh, their collections, their inspiration behind the collection, and a few information, uh, or, or like a few pieces of information about the brand and you guys when I looked at their catalog I was so excited to test their fragrances because it's a brand with such a beautiful concept behind. I'm sure you will see that I titled this video when uh, art and history meets perfumery or meets meet perfumery something like this because to me this is a brand that you can truly sense the history behind it you can truly sense the passion of the founder uh, for fragrances in general because all their fragrances are in inspired by ancient fragrances that you can find or like you could have found in the Ottoman Empire. Now like I said this brand was founded in 2020 in Turkey by Bekir Kantarci. Uh, he not only is a fragrance enthusiast, he's the nose behind all these fragrances, but from what I read he's also a antique bottle collector. He had quite a collection you guys because not only that he opened, basically they opened a concept store in a sense. They have a store when you can where you can go the store is located in Istanbul where you can go and try out all of their fragrances but they also opened in that store a museum part where the founder displayed or showcased uh, some of his ancient bottles from the old days of the Ottoman Empire. He has some from Mecca, from Saudi Arabia. He even has some vintage bottles, not even vintage, like antique bottles from Europe, from France, from Czech Republic, you know. So he has a beautiful collection of ancient bottles. And you will really see that the brand really takes a lot of inspiration from the rich heritage and from the history of the old Ottoman Empire. A lot of their fragrances are inspired from those times and when I mean inspired, how to say, not inspired in terms of just the scent profile, but inspired in terms of the bottle, in terms of how the bottle is made, the kind of, the kind of fragrances or like the kind of notes they reach for. And to give you just a bit of an example, by the way, this video will be a bit longer because I want to give you quite kind of an introduction you know to the brand so you can have an idea what this brand is all about and then I will review uh, the fragrance that I want to review today okay so to quickly mention they have a collection called the Nostalgia Collection by Parfumane uh, here I have it in the scent mask and basically this is an eau de cologne so it's a how to say like cologne water cologne water yeah it's an eau de cologne and their bottles were inspired by the ancient bottles of eau de cologne that were found uh, in the ottoman empire and it's so beautiful you guys basically when you open this fragrance it comes with instructions as to how to actually open it and it also comes with a card uh, where they tell you a bit of the history behind the collection and a bit of a bit of information about the eau de cologne bottles from the ottoman empire so let me just show you okay so for instance here you can quickly see the instructions as to how to actually open the bottle and to how to actually use it. You can also see here they have a card here it's written in Turkish a few pieces of information and in the back you also have it uh, everything in English as well which I find it such a nice touch it's such a personalized touch to actually get to understand what this collection is all about. 
uh, so yeah, and now here is the bottle you guys look when I first saw the bottle <laughs> to me it may it to me kind of looks like a drink in a sense you know not necessarily alcoholic but some kind of syrup something like this but it's actually a perfume bottle but how unique does this one look you guys and when you actually want to use it you're supposed to unscrew this cap hold on let me actually show you i find it how to say you guys it's like to me it's not just that you're wearing fragrance and you're just smelling good it's actually quite an experience quite a ritual to apply this fragrance you know uh, so yeah, you take off this cap uh, here it has a slight silicone thing that you have to take off uh, and after you take it off you screw back the cap and you actually pour the fragrance on your skin you know and I find it such a look it's something else honestly it's something else usually even when you see eau de cologne fragrances now you see them like in the usual regular fragrance bottle you know you don't see something like this so i think you can get now what i mean when i say that they really took a lot of inspiration uh from the heritage from their heritage from their roots basically so yeah, this is just an example but i will not talk about this fragrance in today's video i will have another video where i will talk about this one but i also want to show you a fragrance from another collection this is from the dolma bachche collection yeah this is from the dolma bachche palace collection and this one is called hold on let me read it Chef Herbaha. Look, I don't know if I butchered the name. If I have, I'm very sorry. I don't know how to read it. Uh, it's so beautiful. And also, can I just talk about the presentation of the fragrance? It's so beautiful. Yeah. Wow. And let me show you, like, you guys, when I open the bottle, like, this is what I'm talking about. Look, I am, when it comes to the art of fragrances, like, I look at fragrances from, like, two perspectives. Okay, one is the regular smelling good you know like yes you want to smell good you want to yeah you want to smell good but there's also the like nitty-gritty artistic side of fragrances and i'm so passionate about that aspect you guys i feel like low-key i'm kind of like a bit nerdy when it comes to that area because i love to read about the history of perfumes i love to read about different fragrances different types of fragrances how fragrance has evolved through times uh and i love to overall have a, a wider knowledge in this sense and when i looked at the bottles you guys again when i see this one i will insert the close-up because i don't want to drop anything but as you open the package you see again you have a card here with instructions you also have the same card that you have for the nostalgia collection you have it here for the dolma bachche palace collection with a few pieces of information in english uh, and in the back you have a few pieces of information in turkish as well here you have the bottle just like look how beautiful it is like it even has some like crystal details some like flower details on it it's so so elegant so timeless so feminine so mesmerizing in a sense like i could just spend a lot of time and just like admire the beauty of the bottle and it's so sleek and it's so small and it fits perfectly in the hands of a woman i feel like and you also have this pump i think it's called in english basically you unscrew the cap of this fragrance hold on you take this part here you take this one off uh you put this one here you screw it and this is how you use the fragrance you know basically you know you like spray yourself like uh the princesses back in the days used to do you know you guys again it's i feel like with this fragrance it's a ritual you know i think you get an understanding when i mean that they really they how to say like basically they took inspiration from the history but they reinvented it for the newer generations in a sense and it's not just about smelling good i feel like it goes way beyond just smelling good you know it goes way beyond being trendy being in trend with everything that's releasing now i feel like they go into the they go into a direction of their own oh and by the way i'm not paid to talk about their fragrances uh I don't know if I have mentioned this or not, all the fragrances from the brand were kindly sent to me and thank you so much to the team, but uh, I am not paid to review them, I am not paid to talk about them and I am not paid to say anything about them. So yeah, full disclosure. Again, I will talk about this beautiful fragrance over here in a different video, but you guys, honestly, when I smell it, it smells like a pastry from Paris from back in the day. I don't know, this is the feeling it gives me so beautiful again they have a little bit of everything for everybody but where they really shine in my opinion is with this kind of collections like it's a true experience to even unbox it you know and i feel like if you're a fragrance collector like 
you want to have something like this in your collection, you know? Yeah. I cannot say how enthusiastic I am to talk more about their fragrances. Now, if I kept showing different collections from them, I want to show the Ottoman perfume collection as well. I want to give it some light. But again, quickly just showing it to you, just so you have an idea. Now, this one in particular is called Zeref Shan, and this is the concentrated oil. I have it here in the 10 ml version. Now, this is their presentation, but again, I will insert a beautiful close-up with the presentation. And something that I find it so, again, it's a true experience, you guys. Basically, just let me show you how their bottles came. come. They are so beautiful. Uh, let me gently take it out. Now, look, I will just give you a close-up so you can see. Do you see the kind of, uh, not cap, I don't know. How do you call this one in English? I don't, I can't, I don't know how to call the material in English, uh, but you have it here, you know, just like you had it back in the day. Because back in the day, when it comes to concentrated oils, this is the kind of cap that you had in, for fragrances. But they also provided, now this is not glass, it's a plastic, but it's like a very high quality plastic. They also provide a glass-like cap, you know, that you can put, you know, and then you can just like apply it, you know, and like smell amazing, yeah. I'm really excited to talk about these ones as well. Now, let me quickly put all these ones back so I don't drop them. Uh, so I, I don't do anything to them and then I will come back and talk about Sacred Palace. So let's continue with Sacred Palace. Now this is the fragrance that I have been testing it the most lately because I have been wearing it the most lately. If you have been watching some videos of mine, you know that I'm a sucker for black and gold. I love this color combo. I think it works amazing and this is all about black and gold. And let me just show you the beautiful details that you have. And also the cap, the cap is very heavy, you guys, and low-key, I would love to have a ring like this, maybe not as big, but something, you know, like more, more, more of a statement ring in a sense. Yeah, I would love, <laughs> you know, me being me, but yeah. Uh, I will insert the notes for the fragrance on the screen. By the way, you can find all their fragrances on Fragrantica, but in all honesty, I don't think the notes that they, they listed uh, actually give justice to how beautiful the scent is. I think when it comes to the notes they listed, they were a bit more, they were like a bit more mysterious, you know, they haven't listed everything. You guys, this reminds me of two other fragrances that I have in my collection and that are like in my top 10 for life and that I absolutely love them without being an inspiration or a clone or without being in that same exact scent family. This one has a development of its own, but it has some accords that reminds me of those two fragrances. Now, basically this one opens out with a beautiful sweet citrus accord. I feel like when I mean sweet citrus, I mean like orange, mandarin, orange, that kind of sweet citrus, accompanied with a gorgeous yellow fruity tropical facet. Now you have these two very sweet leaning accords with a beautiful rose accord that leans more gourmand. To me, it's imagine like a red rose, but a red rose that's sweet, that's full, that's dense, you know, but without, without any greenness in a sense, you know, it's like, like I said, the gourmand leaning rose accord. This fragrance is definitely sweet, it definitely has a lot of gourmand facets and it has a lot of different sweet nuances that put together, they create such a beautiful, sweet, delicious fragrance. Now you have to enjoy sweet fragrances to enjoy this fragrance, but if you do, look, this is one it's worth testing for sure. Now to let you know the two fragrances that this one slightly reminds me of, this one reminds me, first of all, of Tresor La Nuit. And what it actually reminds me from Tresor La Nuit, you have this sweet citrus mixed with tropical fruity nuances that you have it here and you have it in Tresor La Nuit as well. But I feel like in Tresor La Nuit, it's mixed with that incense facade, it's mixed with a different note. So Tresor La Nuit, it, it goes into a different scent direction in a sense. Well, this one, this one here is mixed with rose and the rose accord, the way they played here with the rose, reminds me of Shagafood from Swiss Arabian. You have the same sweet, full, rich rose, slightly spicy in a way, but not too spicy. I feel like the spicy facet comes and goes in a sense. And what I mean by spicy, sometimes I detect this like slight saffrony metallic facet here and there. But again, I don't detect it all the time. I feel like it comes and it goes, it's almost like in waves, you know? And now you have all this uh, on a beautiful creamy lactonic base, you guys. When you get to the heart of the fragrance, that's when I feel like, that's when it made me, how to say, like that's when it hooked me in a sense, because 
I have Tresor La Nuit, so I am familiar with the sweet citruses, with the tropical fruits. I love fruity fragrances in general, I love rose fragrances in general, but when it comes to the heart, oh my god, basically in the heart, uh, the sweet citruses fade away completely, that like tropical fruity accord fades away completely, and you are left with that beautiful rose accord that now really gets a, t a chance to shine, because in the opening, I feel like it was behind the fruity facet. Now it's the start of the show at this point. So you have the rose accord, that sweet, quite gourmand leaning, slightly vanillic as well. And you have this beautiful, creamy lactonic base. To me, it smells like, imagine you take like a cold glass of milk and you put some like uh, caramel in it. So you have this very beautiful, like creamy condensed milk lactonic facet with something that to my nose smells like melted praline there. Cause it's almost like how to say, you have the praline facet, but it's almost like that praline is stretched within that lactonic facet, you know, so it's not ultra sweet, you know, it definitely gets slightly less sweet as it starts to develop without fully losing its sweetness. This is still a sweet fragrance. And I feel like the more it gets closer to the last bit of the dry down, basically it loses the rose accord, not completely, but it moves into the background. And I feel like now that lactonic accord, that like milky mixed with caramel, that like condensed milk mixed with caramel facet is the most pronounced to my nose with some like, how to say, like soft shy woody facets in the background, some like powdery nuances in the background. But again, these two are more like nuances to give a bit of complexity to the fragrance. But the core that I smell the most is the condensed milk, that like lactonic accord mixed with the melted caramel in a sense. Um, it's so beautiful, you guys, and I'm telling you, whenever I smell this fragrance, look, this became my hair fragrance. Like, every time I wash my hair, after I style it, after I dry it, I always, I turn all my hair in the front and I do a few sprays here in the back and I do a few sprays on the length of my hair here, here as well, but in... Um, inside not outside because it's not uh, really healthy for to apply fragrance on this part of your hair and then to go outside you know where the sun is very strong yeah i feel like the true beauty of this fragrance is in its this creamy milky lactonic facet with the rose with the praline or like praline caramel something like this with the fruity facet in the opening it's such a it's such a playful fragrance it's such a flirty fragrance in a sense and it's also it's like to me, if this fragrance would be an energy, to me it would be feminine, sensual, playful and flirty. All this combined, you know, in the opening it's a bit more fun, it's a bit more flirty and playful. As it develops, it gets to be a bit more sensual because of the creaminess, because of the lactonic facets, because of the way they did the rose here. So yeah, if you have any traveling plans to Turkey, to Istanbul to be more specific, go and check out their store. If you're a fragrance, like if you're a fragrance nerd like me, Go and look at their museum, go and look at the the Asian bottle, their Asian or like vintage bottle collections. I am so curious how it looks, honestly. If I haven't inserted up to this point, I will insert now some pictures with their store, with their uh, ancient bottle collection. Now, I don't know if it's called ancient in English, but basically it's not vintage, it's much more than vintage, it's from like more than 100 years ago. So it's ancient, ancient, isn't it? I don't know but basically very old bottles. Now, let me quickly mention a few more aspects about the performance. Look, I feel like this is neither a beast mode fragrance, neither a soft intimate fragrance. I feel like this is somewhere in the middle. I can smell it on my skin for five hours, five hours and a half easily. After that, I feel like it's definitely an intimate fragrance. You have to get really close to your skin to be able to smell it on, uh, to smell it basically. But in my hair, I can smell it for days. On my clothes, I can smell it for days. Like even the second day or like the next day, I can still smell it if I sprayed, let's just say, I don't know, on like a scarf of mine or like a t-shirt of mine, you know, or like, I don't know, wherever I decide to spray it, next day I will still be able to smell it. But how to say not able to smell it in a sense like, I have to like dip my nose in the t-shirt, you know? No, like easily, like if I open my closet or if I do something, you know, or if I walk by the place where I left the scarf or anything, I get waves of this fragrance and it's very beautiful. Now, speaking of gender, honestly to me, this leans definitely more on the feminine side, if you were to ask me, uh, but like I always say, if you're a man and you love to wear this fragrance, like wear it and rock it and love every second of you when you're wearing it, you know, but because of the sweetness, because of the creaminess, because 
Because of all these beautiful sweet nuances, I am tempted to say this definitely leans more, I mean definitely more on the feminine side. However, if you're a man and you don't look at fragrances or like how to say, if you're a man and you love fragrances from various scent families and you are not afraid to wear fragrances that are sweeter, that are perhaps a bit more creamy, a bit more sweet, a bit more vanillic, a bit more rosy, you know, then if you have a chance to test this one, of course, test it. Who knows? Who knows, you guys? Basically, fragrance is so subjective that what I like, you might not like, what you love, I might love, I might not. Uh, some fragrances marketed towards women, men love to wear them as well, and I don't think there is an issue with that. I feel like everyone should be allowed to wear whatever the hell they want to wear, you know? So yeah, uh, I think this is pretty much everything I wanted to say about this fragrance. Uh, just expect to see more videos from this brand. Uh, Honestly, I feel like for the beginning, it was only fair to start with the fragrance that I have actually been using the most, not just from the brand, but from like my fragrance rotation, kind of like summery fragrances. This one with Red Velvet, with Jean-Paul Gaultier La Belle Parfum, with Soirel Dahab, with a few other fragrances. Those were in my summer rotation, you know? And also I started to use a lot, I know this is besides the point, but I started to use a lot more of my samples. Like one day, uh, me and my partner were going out with some friends of ours and I decided to wear uh, the sample that I had from Mandorle, from Soradora, and I decided to layer it with Buzi Cherry from Paris Corner that I got from Dubai collection. Uh, you guys, those two together, like cherry in summer just hits different. I don't know, have you noticed this aspect? Cherry in winter, I like it, but I'm not like a diehard fan of it. But cherry in warm weather, you guys, it hits so different. I love how cherry or bitter cherry or cherry almond fragrances smell in warm weather. So yeah, that's another combo that I loved. I wore this one with Nebras, I wore this one on its own. Look, I don't want to make this video any longer, so I will just uh, end it here. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you want to tell me anything, please put it in the comment section and I promise that I will get back to you. Honestly, I don't know what fragrance I will be trying out next. I thought to review a fragrance from the family collection called Mask, not Mask, not Masky Blend fruity blend because I'm thinking that perhaps uh, I should start with more summer, summery fragrances, you know, uh, and that is the fragrance that I actually used quite a lot lately as well. I had the decant of that fragrance. So yeah, I will see. I will surprise you. I don't know. If you would like me to continue with any fragrances that you saw me mentioning today, let me know and I will definitely continue with that fragrance. But yeah, Again, thank you very much for watching, you guys. I appreciate your support. Like I always say, if you want to tell me anything, please put it down below in a comment and I promise that I will get back to you. Also, I want to take this opportunity to thank a lot the brand for giving me the opportunity to explore so many of their fragrances. Uh, I definitely discovered something that I really like, you guys, and I cannot wait to talk about them. So yes, I will see you in my next video, but until then, thank you so much for watching, you guys, and I want to wish you an amazing day wherever you are. Bye.